G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are extraordinarily well. Today I want to talk about the latest of what's going on in the camera world. And it's not just with the big OEMs, the original equipment manufacturers, but there's also lots of good stuff going on in the third party space. But just before we jump into all of that, I wanted to say yes, there is a little bit of the latest news in my world which is our lockdown is slowly easing. We are still in lockdown. It's now gone out to a 15 kilometer radius. And here in Melbourne, we are now officially the longest city in the world in lockdown, depending on how you measure it. We're at something like 250 days. Holy cow, it's a big deal, but we are freer. And by way of that, I've actually been able to go out and do some work, which has made me so much happier. I've done one photo shoot. It happened to actually be with my drone, would you believe? But that's still work. It's still photography. It was filmmaking. I don't mind. I'm just so happy to be out doing something. So good. Anyway, let's jump into all the other latest news. Now I'm going to start with some news for Fuji users for the X-Mount. The Kippon Ibelux 40mm f 0.85 Mark III is coming! Wide open shooting with the new Ibelux 40.85 Mark III on the Fujifilm X. There is much better chromatic aberration, better resolution and better control under strong light. Now this is just a fun fact from Kippon themselves, they say, this is their statement, that the 40mm f 0.85 performs better on the Fuji than on Sony cameras. Why, they're asked, they don't know. It's the same lens, who knows? That's just the way that it is. So that's interesting that they've come out and said that. An f 0.85 40mm, I suppose that makes it basically a 60 millimeter. What a cracker of a lens. Very interesting. I would love anybody who's interested in this lens or knows about this lens and has heard of the previous versions of this lens, the Mark I and Mark II, please let me know. Viltrox is releasing their APS-C sized primes. And that is, of course, the 23, the 33, and the 56 1.4s. For the XF mount, they're releasing them in red, a color that they are calling China red, and there will only be 500 made. I quite like the idea of having a red lens, a red professional lens on the front of my camera. It is very rare to see that sort of coloring on any lens at all. We pretty much get what? Gray, white, and black versions of gray. That's it. Sort of fun. I, I'm not sure, I think I might have seen this happening for the Sony mount as well. Not sure if it's happening for the Z mount or any other mounts. But if you are in Fuji, check it out. Looks pretty cool. Further Fuji news, I have watched a really interesting interview with the CEO of Sigma. And the CEO was asked, when are you ever going to be making lenses for Fuji. And basically what they have come back with is they are exploring the idea. So it may well be that we will see some Sigma lenses for Fuji in the future. It certainly wasn't a firm no. Interesting, this interview, which was 15 to 20 minutes long, covered all sorts of things, but there was not a single question unless I fell asleep, which is possible. Uh, but no, it was a good interview. I didn't mean it like that. It's more that I'm tired, is that uh, they did not ask when is Sigma going to be making any lenses for the Z or RF mounts? This question wasn't asked and it would seem like a very obvious question to me. Still makes me think there's a reason why it wasn't asked because they can't do it at the moment, that they have been asked not to. That's what I've heard, that's the rumors I've heard out there that they've been asked not to do it as these two systems get started. Who knows what the truth is, but it's just super interesting when you kind of have an interview with a company like Sigma, of which Canon and Nikon are such a massive part of their ranges of lenses in the past, and they don't have them. It seems to be a bit of a glaring question. Interesting information from Sigma. In Canon news, wow, haven't they released a super interesting lens 
for the RF mount. Now this is a 3D lens and it's a fisheye lens. It's crazy. I haven't actually seen any images coming out of it yet, but I've got to read to you what it is. It is a 5.2 millimeter f2.8 dual fisheye 3D VR lens. Unlock new dimensions in visual storytelling with the RF 5.2 2.8 dual fisheye 3D VR from Canon. Currently compatible with the EOS R5 mirrorless digital camera, this L series lens is the world's first digital interchangeable lens that can capture stereoscopic 3D 180 degree VR imagery to a single image sensor. This sounds like a super exciting lens and I suppose we'll start to see more information rolling out about it, but it's exciting to see Canon doing what I would call an exotic lens, something that we haven't seen before. Great work, Canon. Okay, let's jump into some Sony news and there is an interesting new lens from Sigma and this is the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter lens. It is an F five through to 6.3 DG DNOS sports lens. It seems to be coming in at 1,499 US dollars. And from what I can see with the first review of this lens, it's recommended for travelers who want a quality mega zoom. And yeah, 600 mil, is a lot. Okay, now I want to jump over to DJI for a second. They've been a really interesting manufacturer over what, the last five, seven, eight years, something like that. Making drones, making uh, stabilized cameras, action cameras, you know, they're working here and there doing interesting things. Now, I'm not sure if you're aware, but they have made some sort of cinema level cameras and we've seen it mounted to their Inspire drones, and there has been some handheld ones over the years, but they haven't really been very widely marketed. There are rumors now circulating, and there are images that you can actually see online of a new cinema camera from DJI. Now, what's amazing about this camera is it sort of looks like a normal kind of cine camera at the back, but the front of it is actually the lens system on a gimbal, all built into one unit. Now, I really love the idea of this, and, it, and it's quite compact, like it doesn't look very big. And if you've ever used an Osmo, the original Osmos, which was sort of a, basically you have the sensor unit and everything just in this small sort of ball, and I had the original really small Osmo, which was just kind of this handheld, thing with a little ball on the top and it was stabilized, fantastic. I mean, we've now got the pocket, which is kind of an iteration of that, but a little bit lower end. Well, they actually have a higher end version with detachable lenses. And I think it either had a micro, a micro four thirds or a one inch sensor somewhere around that. Well, their next version of that is rumored to be coming much higher quality. It's just a really interesting and unique idea. And if there's one thing that DJI have been great at, it's innovation, creating things that we haven't seen before. I think for cinematographers, this is a pro level camera. This is not for vloggers. You definitely won't be holding it out in front of yourself. This is a really interesting idea to have the physical stabilization built into all of the one unit and it doesn't appear to be very large. Anyway, let's keep our eyes on that one. Those of us who are interested in video, I think it's quite an interesting development. And in Nikon news, there has been a minor bug fix to the D6. It is extraordinarily minor. If you have a D6, I suspect you should apply this minor bug fix. Also in further Nikon news, Viltrox are also providing firmware updates for their entire range of lenses released for Z so far, to the best of my understanding, and they state that this will improve everything related to focus. Well, of course, that makes sense. That's the main thing that lenses do, don't they? Bring the world in and out of focus and capture light. So I think if you have any Viltrox lenses for your Z mount, it would be very worthwhile updating your lenses. I need to do that too. I have a number of them to update. Okay, I will. Next in Nikon news, uh, the D850 is back in stock again, I've read again. Didn't, didn't know it was still out of stock. So if you're after a D850, 
they're available again, which is great news because it is an outstanding camera for the class that it is in. Also, Nikon has announced there are a few more lenses from the F range that are disc continued. Let me very quickly tell you what they are, just in case you were thinking of buying one. You best rush out. And they include the Nikon AFS Nikkor 80 to 400 4.5 to 5.6 EDVR. I think that's a relatively old lens. Also, the Nikon AFS DX Zoom Nikkor 12 to 24. I think I bought that lens 15 years ago or longer. And the Nikon AFS VR Micro Nikkor 105 f 2.8. Well, obviously, we've got the new macro, don't we? Which is for the Z mount, which is an absolute cracker of a lens. So that's three lenses that if you're interested in getting any of those, they will become rarer and they might get more expensive, not less. So maybe run out and grab one while they're still kind of hanging around. And Capture One, they have their latest update to their software. And if you haven't upgraded to version 21 yet, you can now and it gives you a free upgrade to the next version. Capture One continues to improve and innovate. I've been using it now for how long? Five, something like five or six years. And I think the improvement cycle is actually increasing and they're getting better and better. I would love it to be faster. My Mac here is a little bit old and I plan on getting an M1X Mac Mini as soon as they drop, rumoured to be dropping soon. Capture One has said that Capture One just runs like crazy on the M1 chip. So maybe that will be enough of an improvement if and when I can get my hands on it. This is an aging system, can't wait. And as I said in a previous video, from a video perspective, just the M1 Mac Mini is over twice the speed of this top of the range iMac from just four or five years ago. And I just wanted to end this video by talking about the Z9. Very exciting news. Some people have been frustrated by the trailer that's just dropped. It's too much of a tease for them. Marketing 101 is just keep keep the noise going as kind of as long as you can. And I, I don't know, there seems to be just again so much negativity around the fact that, well, Nikon's actually doing what everybody wants. They're delivering a new camera. And the only metric they're being measured by is the fact that Canon and Sony are before them in releasing, well, the R3 is not the flagship camera and the A1 is a very different type of flagship camera to the Z9, just in the sense of the body, the actual body type. So it's kind of arguable that Nikon are first to market for this particular type of camera, full bodied, but with the higher megapixels. The A1 has the higher megapixels and fast and all that sort of stuff, but it is not full bodied. Now, I'm not trying to start a war. I'm not saying anything is better or worse. That is not what I'm saying here. But what I am saying here is that Nikon are actually delivering a first in this particular category. So, I do get a little confused as to why people get so upset. It appears to be a first. And I know people talk about, largely, the only thing that everybody talks about now is the high-speed AF tracking, and specifically with animals, because, well, Nikon's tracking works pretty damn well uh, with people, especially if you have a Z6 II or a Z7 II. So, really, all of this is distilled down to that question around high-speed tracking, mostly with animals and birds and so on. But beyond that, Nikon may well be providing a first in other areas with the Z9. And the marketing that we're going to see over the next few weeks, or maybe even a week, the latest rumours I'm hearing, the latest mumblings, I'm reading as much of everything that I can on the internet at the moment, is that we might actually have the announcement next week. How about that? So it's either a week away or two or three weeks away. It's one or the other. Anyway, it is coming very soon, along with what I think will be a couple of lenses. I hope everybody realizes that, yes, Nikon are creating their own camera. They're the first to bring us a fully 
full-sized, vertical incorporated, larger battery incorporated, high megapixel flagship camera. It's actually a first. The R3 is not that, it is something different. It is great. And the A1 is something different as well, which is also great. Again, it's not a competition, but I just want to point out that Nikon are actually bringing a specific thing to market before everybody else. So, it's all good. They've got their timelines. These timelines have been in train for months, if not longer, on how this would all play out. They're not dropping teaser trailers because they're slowing things down. If more than anything, if they do bring this out in uh, mid-October, this is actually ahead of the rumored timelines that we had, which was going to be November, December. So, they're either doing exactly what they always thought they were doing, or they're actually running a bit quicker. But either way, I, 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 I kind of don't get the negativity. It's a teaser. The definition of a teaser is to tease. That's, that's what it is. That's actually what they called it. I know we're all very, very super excited, and I am too. And I can't wait to read that full spec sheet, and I can't wait to get one in my hand. Who knows when that is? But they're not actually doing anything wrong. I actually find this kind of fun. As usual, everybody, it has been spectacular to see you, and I would love you to let me know in the comments below about any or all of the things that I've just talked about in the latest. Okay, all right. Please subscribe. I would love to see you again if this is your first time here. Please like and please share. Don't forget the merch, can of coney, tees, hats, aprons, stickers, mouse mats. Click on the links below. They take you to a whole little sub website. You can have a play in there if you're interested in having a little bit of merch. Don't forget the website. And I'm super excited. We're finally going to be getting out of lockdown. Hopefully, we're told, we're told freedoms might be roughly back to normal November 5th. Please, if you're not in lockdown out there, can you cross your fingers for Melbourne, Australia? That'd be amazing. All right, see you soon. Bye for now. And in further Fuji, and in further Fuji news, and in further Fuji news, holy cow, how many times am I going to have to say this, people? That's a really hard thing to say, further Fuji news. Okay, here we go.